welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing to you our brand new stamp set, Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring. This set is so cute, so let's go ahead and check it out. This set is filled with a ton of mix and match sentiments that help you make a bunch of awesome sentiments that are perfect for springtime. And we wanted to show you exactly how to do this. So you'll see here, I'm gonna peel off two of the words which are gonna spell out happy birthday. And you'll see that these have made with the same exact size rectangular base so that you can take them and kind of line them right up just like that to create your phrases. So I love how easy this is to do. The natural cling on the stamp helps them stick together. So you just kind of line them up and butt them up right up against each other and then you can just pick them up with your block and you can stamp them. The other thing you can do is line it right up on your block instead of lining it up on your work surface. So here you'll see I'm going to stick one to the block and now this one I'm just going to butt it right up against that edge and then I can just press down and the whole thing will be perfectly lined up and straight and ready for stamping. So now we can just ink that up in some black licorice ink and we can stamp out our happy birthday phrase. Another great thing about this Build a Sentiment set is that you can change the configuration of your different phrases. So here I'm going to stamp out happy birthday to you. And in this case, I'm gonna use them stacked up. So depending on the design of your card, you might want a long sentiment or you might want a stacked sentiment. So we're gonna try it stacked first and then we're gonna stamp out happy birthday to you, which is so super cute. But then I wanted to show you how you could do a long sentiment if that was better for the design of your card. So I'm just taking my phrases there and I'm attaching them to a block and I'm gonna have them all be in one long line. I'm just butting up all those rectangles next to each other. And there you can see, perfect, I can stamp out happy birthday to you in a different configuration, which will work great for the design of my card. Now here you can see I combine the happy with graduation and you could combine it with happy wedding day, happy mother's day, happy father's day, happy Easter, happy spring. You can mix and match it in so many different ways to get really great sentiments for all of your spring holidays. In all of those phrases, we had happy at the front of the phrase. And I thought, well, how about I mix and match these words to create a different phrase where happy is at the end instead. So right now you'll see I'm just lining up all these phrases and you'll see that my favorite way to do it is on my work surface and then I pick it up with my block. And this says, may all your days be happy. And I think that's just so cute and sweet. And it's so much fun to mix and match these. It's almost like a little puzzle. I love doing it. And so here you can see how cute that is and how we've used the word happy in lots of different ways. Now we wanted to do a different phrase that says, may all your wishes come true. So you can see how we're mixing and matching these different things. Now we have added birthday wishes and we're gonna stack it. So now we've got birthday wishes and then we have come true underneath and then we're gonna have the may all your on top there. And so that's gonna give us a nice stacked phrase instead of a long phrase. So mixing and matching these is so awesome and I just love all of these sweet sentiments so much and the font is just so, so cute. Now next, there are some fun baby phrases in this. So we have congrats on your baby boy, then you can change it to congrats on your baby girl or just congrats on your baby. You can also stamp out congrats on your twins, which is really fun. And I'm gonna need this for a friend of mine pretty soon here who's having twins. So congrats on your twins. And then you can also stamp out congrats on your bundle of joy. And in this case, I'm gonna make it a stacked sentiment. So you're starting to see how you can mix and match these in such cool ways. And it gives you the perfect phrase for all of your cards. Now you can do really long phrases too, and I really like this one, which is wishing you a lifetime of joy and happiness, which is so beautiful for a wedding card. I also like that a lot of these phrases would be really nice stamped on the inside of your cards too, to kind of decorate the inside. So you could say like happy wedding day on the front or um, best wishes, but on the inside you could have wishing you a lifetime of joy and happiness or wishing you a happily ever after, wishing you all the best, or even wishing you the best day ever. We also have another really cute phrase that's it's adoption day, which I really, really love that. I think that's so awesome. I love that there's lots of unique and fun phrases in this set. And then next up you can see some sending phrases. So we have sending sunshine your way, or you can mix and match things to do sending all my love on our anniversary. We could keep going and going, creating all of these awesome phrases, but I thought it'd be fun to show you this set in action. And then we are going to be creating three different beautiful cards using the brand new spring 2024 release combined with these awesome sentiments. 
And so here you can see all of these really cute cards. We have sending love your way. We have happy spring or happy Mother's Day, which I love with that mason jar and the lily of the valley so much. Sending smiles and sunshine with our die cut veggies and another happy Mother's Day card that's so pretty. Sending joy and birthday wishes, which is a fun combo or sending happiness your way, wishing you a happy Mother's Day, sending smiles and sunshine. I mean, there are so many cool things you can do with it. And right now we are gonna recreate the coolest give it a whirl card card from Tammy and she used our Bubbles of Joy stamp set and scripty bubble sentiments in a very unique way to create a record. So we're going to start off by stamping out the biggest bubble and then we're going to take kind of like the medium size bubble and any circle stamps would work for this but the bubbles are great because it has all these little different sizes and we're just going to be adding some different circles there to create the look of a record. Now I wanna do some ink blending, so I need to do a little bit of masking. So I'm gonna stamp that largest circle on a full stick post-it. This is a post-it with the whole thing is covered with stickiness on the back. And so I can just peel that piece up and then I'll just take my scissors and just cut right kind of in the middle of that black line all around this circle. And that's gonna create a nice mask that's going to protect the stamping we just did and make it so that I can ink up some grays and black to create a record. Then once we have that mask cut, we can just lay it right over top our stamped images and that is going to protect them. So I'm gonna be using some hickory smoke ink and black soot ink to create the look of a record. And I'm starting with the lighter gray there in the center. I'm starting with my brush over top of that mask and then moving my way out. And then I'm coming from the outside in with our black ink there. And you'll see that we kind of have that nice little blend between the gray and the black. And I'll go back and forth between the colors to make sure it's nice and blended. To create more of a look of the record, we're gonna use these Dutch just stitching circles here. And these are awesome because they just stitch, they don't die cut. And so we're gonna use a couple of these sizes here and we're gonna layer them all on there to create the grooves of the record. So I can just line them right up over the circle. And once they're all lined up and you can see they're nice and even, I'm gonna use one big piece of washi tape to hold them together in place. Then we can run it through the die cut machine and you'll see that we have this beautiful stitch detail that's really going to help this look like a record. Then we can go ahead and peel up that mask. We can save it to use it again for later and then use some markers to add some color to the middle and we're going to be doing a nice pinky red here for a fun pop of color. The next thing we're gonna start doing is creating our Give It A Whirl. And if you've never made a Give It A Whirl card, make sure to check out our intro video. We will link it in the description below. We're gonna take the moving circle piece die from the Give It A Whirl die set and we're gonna line it up with this design that we've created. And you'll see that little cut line there is lining up right with that center circle that we stamped earlier. So it's nice and easy to line up. And then we're gonna use our washi tape to hold it in place. And then we're gonna run that through the die cut machine. And this is gonna create the first part of our Give It A Whirl mechanism leading to this awesome interactive card we're gonna make. And you can see that this really does look like a record. This idea by Tammy is so much fun and I think this is just so adorable. And now that we've created this moving piece, we're gonna start working on the main base piece. And so I have a piece of cardstock here that's five inches by five inches, and I'm taking out the Give It A Whirl template. And I'm gonna add this template here right to this piece of cardstock because we're gonna do some inking. And by using this template, that's giving me the exact area to design in that's gonna be covered up by that record piece as it moves. And you'll see how that's all gonna work in just a little bit. So I'm taking out some Lawn Fawn Minty Fresh ink and I'm just going to ink in the center of this and then kind of move out. And by doing this, we're just kind of creating like a little focal point, but we're not going to add color to the whole piece. And the nice thing about this is it can kind of be imperfect. It's just going to look really pretty once we put our design over it. Then to add some more kind of interest to it, I'm going to take this ink and I'm going to smear it onto a block and then we'll just spray some water on it and we'll mix the water with the ink and then we can pick it up with a paintbrush and tap the paintbrush to create splatters on this background. And once again, this is going to create more interest for the background for our scene. And by using that template there, it's going to make sure that all those little splatters just stay in that focal point area that we want to design in. The next thing that I need to do is remove this template, but I'm also going to make some little marks right here, just like this, just so that I know exactly where that template was in case I need to line it up again. And I always like doing this as I go through my design. So I just take a little pen and make some marks. Then we can go ahead and remove that and I'm going to clean that template off and make sure there's no extra ink on there. And now we're going to start working on creating the outside part of this circle. So to do that, I'm going to take the main part of the template and put it down and then 
there's this little circle that comes with the template too. And I'm just going to put that right in the center. And that's going to give me my exact placement, especially since I didn't ink a perfect circle in the center. This is going to tell me exactly where to put that middle template piece. Then I can remove the frame of the template. And now we have that circle in perfect placement and we can start to ink around it. And what we're gonna do is use that same black soot ink that we use for the record. Because on the outside of this, we want it to look like part of the record. And on the inside, it's gonna be this cute little scene. And so by using this template piece there, I can make sure to protect the thing that we already created and then ink up around it. Once I have gone ahead and inked all the way around that circle, I can go ahead and remove that template. And now you can start to see the outside record part and then the scene on the inside. And we're gonna see how this all forms in just a second. But first we need to do some very creative stamping here. So this is our stamp set, So Very Mice. And there's this cute little mouse who is holding on to an embroidery hoop. Well, Tammy came up with the cutest idea here. So she stamped our embroidery hoop mice. And then she went back to that Bubbles of Joy and Scripty Bubble Sentiment that we used to create the record earlier. And she is going to turn that embroidery hoop into a record. And I love when people do this. It's so creative and so cute. So we're going to take that medium sized circle. I stamped one off to the outside to create another little record. And I'm going to stamp the medium sized circle inside of that embroidery hoop. And then I'm just going to find other size circles in the set to kind of create some concentric circles to give the look of a record. So we'll stamp that kind of next smallest down one. And then we're going to stamp a little one in the center of both of these. So we'll have one record there off to the right and now we're creating a cute little record that this mouse is going to be holding and I just can't get over how adorable this is. So now we're going to take out our markers and start adding some color and we're going to color this record to match the one that we colored and die cut earlier. And so you can see how cute that looks. We have the individual record, the mouse holding the record, and then we're also going to be taking out another mouse here from You Autumn Know and he is just so adorable and he's going to be sitting on top of that embroidery hoop to cover up the little part at the top. And then here we have the Just Plain Awesome set that has those little pieces of paper there. We went ahead and stamped those and added some color to those. And that's going to look like kind of like the cover for the record, which is so adorable. We're also going to be taking out the All Star stamp set and using a sentiment from that in a different way too. And I love the idea of looking through your stamps and kind of seeing what kind of new things you could see and create with them. And this idea by Tammy was just so fun and clever and so much fun to put together. And so now I'm going to add some adhesive behind all of these and create a little collage. So we'll layer the record behind and then we're going to take our little embroidery mouse turned record mouse here <laughs> and layer him over top here just to create like a cute little scene inside that circle that we stenciled and inked earlier. So we're going to layer those guys down and then we're going to take this other little mouse and he is going to sit on top of that embroidery hoop. And by doing that, now you would never have any idea that it was the embroidery hoop mouse. He now looks like a record loving mouse. So it's so cute and sweet. Next, I'm going to stamp the sentiment and there's a sentiment in All Star that says, hope your day is a hit and it's supposed to go along with a baseball theme, but it also really works well with this music theme. So I'm going to line those up again in that circle that we inked and I'm going to use my Misty tool to stamp them there up by those little mouths, just like that. And then for a last finishing touch, we're going to take the stamp set that says, here we go, a waddling. It's got all these little music notes in it. And so we're just going to stamp some music notes around to go along with our music and hope your day is a hit theme. Then once we have those all stamped out, we can start to work on making this the base of our Give It A Whirl. So we're going to be using the main base piece from the original Give It A Whirl set, which has this great stitch circle shape to it. And you'll see that it's got that little cut line, just like our moving piece too. And so we're going to be lining this right over top, having that cut line at around three o'clock, just like we did with the record we die cut a bit earlier. And once that's all lined up, we can hold it in place again with some washi tape. And then we're just gonna run this whole thing through a die cut machine. And this is gonna give us our main base piece with that little cut line into it that's gonna help us create our interactive mechanism. And here you can start to see how the two pieces that we've created are going to layer up. And you can see how it looks like a little record like that. And then we're gonna get the surprise of the scene underneath. So now it's time to start working on the mechanism. We're going to cut another moving piece just out of some plain white cardstock. Then we're going to be cutting the connector piece. And for this piece, you want to cut it from some printer paper or copy paper, some nice thin paper. And so we're going to cut that. 
And then we're also going to go ahead and cut the tab piece. And this one you're going to want to cut it out of some nice strong 100 pound cardstock. And so we're going to die cut that. And then we're also going to be cutting the little decorative arrow piece. And I'm actually going to be cutting this from some pattern paper to give this really nice pink color that's going to match really well with our record. Then we're going to put some of these pieces aside and we're just going to work with our main moving circle piece that we decorated to look like a record and the connector piece. And so we're going to take the main moving circle piece and we're going to flip that over so we're looking at the back. And then we're going to take the connector piece that we die cut out of printer paper or copy paper and we're going to go ahead and fold along the score line that the die created for us making sure that that is a nice sharp fold. Then we're going to take some tape runner dot runner and we're going to cover this whole thing all the way the entire thing. So you'll see I kind of turn it over and make sure I can cover the whole thing with this dot runner. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to attach it right there along that cut line, right along the edge and in the middle of the cut line, just kind of eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And then we're going to press down to secure it. The next thing you want to do is just make sure that you can lift up that piece there. And if there's any extra adhesive, just use your finger to rub it away, which is nice and easy to do. So you'll see I'm just making sure to use my finger, making sure there's no extra adhesive anywhere on my moving circle. Then I'm going to cover the other side of the connector piece with adhesive again. So I'm just going to add adhesive all over that once again, and I'll use my finger to make sure I remove any excess adhesive that there might be on the circle. Once we've removed any of that excess adhesive, we can go ahead and line these two circles up. So this is our plain moving circle piece, and we're just going to line them right back up. And so because they're cut from the same die, it's really, really easy to do. And then we'll press down and secure it so that that connector piece is attached to both our decorated moving circle and our plain moving circle. And I like to press down really hard to make sure it's connected really well. Now it's time to add our tab piece. So we're going to add some adhesive to the right hand side of this tab there, the one that has a little bit of a curve. And then we're going to line that right up behind our decorating moving piece. So you can see we're going to line it right up there. And because it has a curve there, that curve is going to perfectly match up with the curve of the moving circle. And so we can just attach that right on and then press down to make sure that that's nice and secure. Then we're going to take our decorative tab piece and we'll add some adhesive to the back of that and then layer that on too. And I love that this has the little arrow that's going to let the recipient know what to do. Now that we've completed our moving circle piece, we're going to bring back that main base piece that we worked on earlier. Then we're going to take both of these and we're going to flip them over so that we're looking at the back. We're going to take that part of the moving circle that has the tab on it and we're going to feed it through the cut line on that main base piece. And then we're going to use our fingers to guide that circle through. And the first couple times you kind of have to train the paper what to do. So you'll just kind of help it move nice and slow through that cut line. And now you can see that it's starting to move really, really great. Then we're going to set that piece aside and we're going to start working on our card base. And for the card base, Tammy did these really cool stripes and she cut the stripes out of this rainbow ever after paper. And these colors are such a pretty pastel and it's a really fun way to use this pattern paper. So we're going to cut strips that are three eighths of an inch wide out of these different little blocks of color that are on the pattern paper. And this is going to create a really cool diagonal stripe design for our card. Then we're going to take out the Rainbow Ever After 6x6 pad and we are going to look through there for this really pretty polka dot. And now all these papers are going to look really great together because they're all from the same collection. And so we went ahead and trimmed that down to be four and a half by four and a half inches in a square shape. Then we're going to take our yellow piece of paper and I'm going to start off with the center piece there, connecting those two corners. And then I can keep adding adhesive to the back of these strips and then just lining them up right against each other to create this diagonal stripe design. And you can see it's creating this really pretty pastel rainbow. I just think this is such a fun way to use that pattern paper. And so now that we've layered all five of our colors on there, then we can just take our scissors and trim off any of the excess that you might have around the card. And I really, really love this look. It's so much fun. I just think it's just gorgeous and it's so fun to mix and match the pattern papers this way. So we're going to just trim off that last little bit there. And now you'll see that we have this pretty, really gorgeous design. Next, we're going to take out some textured cardstock and I've gone ahead and trimmed that down to be four and three quarter inches square. And we have a four and three quarter inches square card base too. And so we're going to layer that really pretty kind of sage colored paper on there. And then we're going to layer our diagonal striped piece that we just created on top of that. And this is going to create the card base that we're going to be adding our give it a whirl mechanism to.
So we're going to take our give it a whirl mechanism and we're going to flip it over and we're going to use some 3D foam strips and we're going to line up so that the top of the foam strip is lining up with the stitching line detail on the back there. So we're going to make sure to line up the very top of the foam strip with that stitching line. And so we're going to work all of our way around the circle and you can see we're going to line that right up like that. Once we've added our foam strips, we can peel up the liner paper. And then what I always like to do is just see if there's any parts of this foam strip that might be getting away in the way of that moving circle. And if there are, I just take my fingers and just push the foam strips back just a little. It's really nice and easy to do. And then we can flip it over and just attach it right onto the card. So we're gonna layer this right onto the center of the card. And once it's in good placement, we can press down and then we can try our mechanism. And look at that, isn't that so magical? Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I I just played with this over and over and over again but it was also time to work on my sentiment. So now I'm taking out Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring and I'm picking out some of these different words. And so you can do all sorts of cool things with these and you can stack them like we did in the beginning, you can create long sentiments, but you can also curve them to match little wavy banners. So I have a wavy banner here and I thought it would look really nice with this sentiment. So I'm gonna take my little sentiment strips there and I'm actually just gonna curve them slightly onto my block as I add them to match the curve of my sentiment banner. I can still line them up just like I did before with the rectangular bases, but you can see that it has a nice little curve that's going to match that pretty banner. So I'm die cutting the banner from some more of the Rainbow Ever After paper, once again so that everything coordinates really, really beautifully. Once we have that die cut, we can go ahead and ink up our Henry's Build a Sentiment in some black licorice ink, and we're going to stamp that right onto the wavy banner. And you'll see how easy it was to curve it, by having the sentiment actually be like different little pieces of words, it makes it even easier to curve it to a wavy banner. And so this one says, may all your wishes, this is going to be a birthday card, so the hope your day is a hit is going to go along with this birthday theme. This would be great for a music lover. And so we're going to die cut that same pattern paper again, and this bottom part is going to say come true. And so this is a smaller phrase, so I'm just going to have it be part of this wavy banner. I curved that little piece again, just like I did before, and then I'm going to stamp this out. And so this is a really fun way, again, to use these mix and match sentiments because you can have like two little banners that connect kind of like this. You can curve them. There's so many cute things that you can do with this set. And so now we're going to layer that right onto the card like that, and I'm just going to use my scissors to trim off any of the excess. Then we're gonna take those same foam strips that we used on the back of the Give It A Whirl and we're gonna layer it onto these phrases. And that's gonna give it a nice pop. And I like the foam strips because they're also easy to curve to line up with the curve of those banners. Then we can peel up the liner paper and add it onto the card. And oh my goodness, how cool is this? I just love this sentiment. It looks so pretty, all wavy on the card and it makes the card feel really, really magical. Now I wanted to give you a quick tip and trick for your Give It A Whirl cards. If they're ever not whirling exactly how you would want them to, you can take out a powder tool, one of these powder tools that has like a baby powder inside, and then you can go ahead and run that along that cut line as you move your circle around. So you'll see I'm just running it over that main moving circle and also in that cut line as I move my circle. And when you do this, you can see as you give it a whirl, it moves so smoothly. So that's a fun tip and trick if you ever need it for your Give It A Whirls. And look how amazing this is. I love the surprise of the record on the outside with the beautiful sentiment and then the rest of the sentiment underneath. It's such a gorgeous surprise. I just love these little mice. Oh my goodness. I could just play with these cards all day. They just make me smile so much. And I was having so much fun creating interactive cards that we're going to make a platform pop up next. And we're going to start off with some more of that Rainbow Ever After paper. I love this paper so much. And it's this pretty purple. And we're going to be die cutting the platform pop-up main base piece. And we're going to die cut that piece twice. We're also going to be die cutting the T-shaped pieces to create our platform pop-up from that same paper. And we're going to be die cutting three of those T-shaped pieces. Then we're gonna go ahead and fold along the score lines that the die created for us. And you'll see that there's a bunch of vertical folds and then there's also some horizontal folds. And we're gonna be doing this on both of these pieces. And if you've never made a platform pop-up before, make sure to check out our intro to platform pop-up video. We will link it in the description below. Then we're gonna take two of these T-shaped pieces and we're gonna fold along the little score line that those have created for us too. Then we're going to put most of these pieces aside, just having one main base piece and one T-shaped piece that we're going to work on. Then we're going to take out some quarter inch double sided tape and we're going to add it to that tab on the bottom of the main base piece and then underneath the score line on the T-shaped piece that we just folded. 
Then we're gonna flip our main base piece over and we're gonna take that T-shaped piece, we're gonna feed it through that slot. And once we do that, we can go ahead and peel up the liner paper on the adhesive that we added to the T-shaped piece. We're gonna fold over along that first score line and then we're gonna press down and secure that T-shaped piece. Then we'll peel up the liner paper on the next tab. We'll fold along that next big score line folding the tab under and pressing down to secure it in place. And now you can see this cool three-dimensional piece just like that. Then we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other main platform piece and T-shape piece. So we're gonna add our adhesive to the tab on the main base piece and also on the T-shape piece. We'll flip our main base piece over. We'll feed the T-shape piece through. We're gonna peel up the liner paper on the T-shape piece, folding down on that first big fold. We're gonna press down and secure it in place. Then we'll peel up the liner paper on the next fold, fold up on that next one, and then press down to create another three-dimensional piece. Now we're gonna add some more quarter-inch double-sided tape on the little tabs on the right-hand side of these two pieces. Our next thing we wanna do is connect them to form one long piece. So we're gonna butt them up against each other and press down that tab to attach them. Then we're gonna take the third and last T-shaped piece. We'll fold along that score line, but instead of adding adhesive to that part, we're actually gonna trim that part right off. Then we're gonna add adhesive to what ends up being the kind of like bottom part of our T there. And so we're gonna add two quarter inch double-sided pieces right to that piece, right on the back of it. Then we can go ahead and peel up the liner paper on that T-shaped piece, and we're gonna be adding it to one of these platforms. Either one is fine, and we're gonna make sure that those T-shaped pieces kind of line up, eyeballing it, and we're gonna line it right up along that fold. And you'll see it's gonna end up looking just like this. Then we're gonna add some more quarter inch double-sided tape to the other side, the one that doesn't have the T-shaped piece, and we're gonna add three pieces to make sure that it's nice and secure. Once we've added those, we can go ahead and peel up the liner paper, and then what we're gonna be doing is folding this whole big thing in half so that those two main base pieces line up, just like that, and once we have those down, we can go ahead and peel up the liner paper on that last tab, and we'll tuck it underneath, and that'll secure the two pieces together. Then we can go ahead and push up from the bottom and you'll see that we have this amazing three-dimensional piece that is ready to be decorated. Oh, that's so cool, I love it so much. So now it's time to work on the decoration and the platform pop-up comes with these cute little grass pieces here. And so we're gonna die cut those from some Spiffy Speckles paper, the really pretty green color, it's called Pesto. Then once we have those pieces, we're gonna take them and we're gonna flip them over so that we're looking at the back and we're gonna add eighth inch double-sided tape to the back and bottom of all of these grass pieces. Once we have that tape on there, we can peel up the liner paper and start to add them to all of those little T-shaped pieces that are peeking out from the base of our platform pop-up. We die cut the platform pop-up add-on out of some really pretty Rainbow Ever After paper. We added another eighth inch piece of tape to the back and bottom of this piece, and then we're gonna be adding that along the back here of the platform pop-up. And I just love that purple gradient paper with the purple piece from the Rainbow Ever After. They look so beautiful together. So we're just gonna line that up right along the back, and once it's lined up, we can go ahead and press that in place. And now you can see that we have this really pretty back to our platform pop-up, and it's still full to flat and then pops up so that you can easily mail it and then have this awesome three-dimensional design. Next, we're gonna take out the Happy Couple stamp set and we went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of images from this set, that beautiful floral art and the cats and the fun little wedding accessories. And we're gonna start layering those onto the cat. So we're gonna add that cute little top hat on there with some glue tube and we're gonna do the veil in the same way. And then we're also gonna give him a little bow tie too, which is so super cute. Then we can start to layer these into the platform pop-up. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive along the very bottom of the floral arch, and then we're gonna tuck that along that back piece of grass. And you can start to see our gorgeous wedding scene form. Then we'll add a little adhesive to the back of the cats and we're gonna layer them on that middle grass there. And I love layering things on all the different pieces of grass to have some really awesome dimension. Now we're gonna do some fun things with some acetate. So this is about a quarter inch strip of acetate here. We're gonna add some adhesive to the top of it and we'll layer our hearts on. And then what we'll do is we'll add some adhesive to the bottom of it and we're gonna attach it to the back of the grass. But first we need to see exactly how tall those hearts need to be. We can just trim off any of the extra, then we'll add that adhesive. And then we're gonna layer that right behind those cats onto the grass. And that way it looks like the little hearts are actually floating above them. 
it's so much fun to create with those acetate strips that we're going to do a little bit more of that. So we are going to be stamping out all the speech bubbles, which has these awesome speech bubbles that fit those cute tiny phrases that are in a lot of Lawn Fawn stamp sets. And so we have some really cute ones here. We have I Love Mew and we also have I Do. And so we're going to be stamping both of those in some black licorice link into these cute little speech bubbles. Then once both of those cute phrases are stamped, we're going to add a light blue marker and just add that on the inside of that speech bubble and it's going to give it a nice pop. Then we'll take more of that quarter inch pieces of acetate and we're going to go ahead and add adhesive to the top of those and then we'll layer our cute little sentiments on top and then just like we did with the hearts, we're just going to kind of eyeball it, see what height might be nice and then you can just trim that down with your scissors and then add some adhesive to it and then we're going to layer that behind the grass as well. Once again, giving this cool kind of floating part to our platform pop up and so we'll have the hearts floating and our little speech bubbles too. We are recreating another card by Tammy that was just so super cute and one of the best things that she did was she used a mouse from Dandy Day and a mouse from the brand new Veggie Happy and she turned them in to the best man and the maid of honor and I thought this was the cutest idea ever. So there's a little bouquet in this set and we're going to have that adorable little mouse from Veggie Happy is going to hold the bouquet. So we'll just add some adhesive to that and then our mouse can hold on to it and look how cute this is. I just love that they're going to be the little bridesmaids for this adorable cat cat wedding. There's just something about that that makes me smile every time I see this. And so just like we did before, we'll add some adhesive to the back of these and then we're going to layer these guys onto the front piece of grass and that's going to create even more dimension. And we're going to go all the way to the outsides there so you can still see the cute cats and then it really does look like kind of like a little wedding setup right at the arch. And look at that. I mean, oh my goodness, it is so super cute. And so then we're going to try the platform pop up out. You can see how it folds flat. You kind of have the little surprise of the arch, but then as you push up, you get the rest of the surprise of the whole wedding scene. And this is so gorgeous. And now it needs a sentiment from our Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring. So we're looking through the Rainbow Ever After paper again to have something that coordinates. And we're going to be using that really gorgeous gradient paper. And then this little stitch rectangle comes with the platform pop up and it's the perfect size to layer on top. So we've gone ahead and die cut that. And now we're going to pick out some of these cute little phrases from the set. And so I wanted to show you a different way that you can stamp these. We've been lining these up on the block, but you can also stamp them out individually too. And that's what we're going to do here for some of these phrases. So we're going to line up the wishing you a, and we'll pick that up with our block. And then we're going to stamp that in some black li licorice ink right on. And then for all of the other phrases, we're just going to stamp them right underneath. So here we're going to stamp lifetime of, and then now we're going to look for the word happiness and we're going to stamp that underneath. And so I think this is so super cute and another way to use Henry. So you can add them to the blocks or you can stamp all of the different words separately. And that is looking so super cute. So we're going to add some adhesive to the back of that panel and layer it on to the front of the platform pop-up, which of course gives us our gorgeous sentiment for this beautiful cat and mouse wedding. <laughs> so you can see there, we're just going to layer that right in the center. And now now this card is all done and it is so cute. I love that it folds flat so that you can easily mail it with standard postage. So gorgeous. But then of course, as you pop it up, you have this beautiful surprise. I also love that these are so great for people to put on their mantle and just kind of decorate with. They are absolutely adorable. And next up, Shari is going to create a stunning card by Audrey with a St. Patrick's theme. So take it away, Shari. So I am recreating a card by Audrey today. I am cutting out the Lucky Clovers dies from some green Spiffy Speckles paper. And then I'm also pulling out the Rainbow Ever After Petite Paper Pack to use this wide rainbow stripe paper. And I will be cutting this with the outside in stitched rectangle. So I've cut my clovers from the green spiffy speckles and then I just want to add a little bit of inking to the center of those. I'm using freshly cut grass and a small ink blending brush to add some darker green to the centers of all of these clovers. I'll be using all of these clovers on my card today. I did get a little bit too much ink on that one on the far right there, so I will cut another one of that particular size and ink it a little bit better. Now for my sentiment, I am using Henry's Build a Sentiment. This stamp set has so many words, you can build so many sentiments in it, but I am using it to spell out Happy St. Patrick's Day. 
So I've lined up those stamps and picked them up with my block. I have treated my white cardstock with some anti-static powder. I'm stamping this in some clear embossing ink and then I will be adding some gold embossing powder. Then I can heat this up with my heat tool till that powder melts and I get that bright gold shiny sentiment which you're going to see here has a glare because of my desk lights but it does say happy St. Patrick's Day. That just shows you how shiny this gold embossing is. So I've cut my rainbow stripes and I also want to cut a little strip of gold glitter cardstock. This is one half inch by four inches and this is just going to peek out from behind that stripe panel. So I've added some adhesive to the back of this and I will line it up with the right side of my card base and you can see how that is going to peek out from behind this rainbow panel. I'm adding my rainbow panel with some foam tape so it's popped up and has some dimension. And then now I am just placing my clovers where they will be on my card front. I'll also place my sentiment strip here and this is just to get a good idea of where they will all be. Then I will pick each one of them up and I'm starting with the one at the top and I'm adding thin foam squares to this clover. And then I will add some regular thickness foam squares to this large one. And I'm just working my way around popping up the clovers. I'm only adding some foam squares to the back of the leaves and just letting the stems kind of hang loosely. Most of these stems will get tucked behind the sentiment banner or a different clover. For all these in the center, I'm using some regular thickness foam squares. I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue where this one touches that large clover. For this little tiny one without the stem, I'm just going to glue that one directly to the background. And then for this last one, I will use those thin foam squares again. I just like the look of the different dimension between thin foam squares, regular thickness foam squares, and gluing it to the background. You could also achieve this by doubling up the foam if you don't have different thicknesses. And now I'm adding some foam squares to my sentiment. And I like to lay my banner there to see kind of where to place them so that they kind of avoid things that they don't need to be layered on top of or I don't put it too far to the right to where it's off the card. Then I can adhere this down and then I will just trim off the excess on the side. For some added shine, I have a piece of metallic gold cardstock. You can see it's very shiny there. And I'm cutting out three sizes of the little hearts from the Hearts and Stars Skinny Tag die set. And I will just use these gold foil hearts as embellishments around my clovers. I'm just varying which sizes I put where and then I will put these extra hearts in my drawer to use on a later project. Now I did realize that Audrey had added some sparkle splatters to the background which I forgot to do before I assembled my card. But no worries, I can add those now. I have some liquid stardust that I just put on my glass mat here. I'm adding some water so I have a nice fluid liquid to splatter and I'm going to use this scrap piece of paper to protect my sentiment so I don't end up with any of these splatters on my sentiment. I actually like how the shimmer is continuous onto the clovers as well as the background. And here's that finished card and when I pick this up you're going to see all that shimmer from the glitter and the foil and the embossing and I just think this is beautiful. Thank you so much Audrey for letting me remake your card today. Oh my goodness, I can't get over how beautiful this card is. It is so stunning. And now we have some incredible cards by the design team. And here I love how Elise framed her gorgeous Henry sentiment by using the new flower garden backdrop. This is such a stunning design that you could use with any of the sentiments in the set. This card by Grace blew me away. It says, wishing you love and a happily ever after, which goes so gorgeous with her castle and beautiful flower garden backdrop too. I really love how Elise combined parts of the Henry's Build a Sentiment with a scripty thanks die. I love the mix and match and those beautiful Lily of the Valley just make me smile. This card by Tammy blew me away. She created a cute little cake and she has her adorable dogs on top and the wishing you a happily ever after in that wavy banner is just stunning. 
Yanea's gorgeous build a greenhouse card is absolutely stunning and I love the wishing you lots of joy sentiment. It's so beautiful and goes great with the greenhouse. And this card here by Mendy is so much fun and I love the may all your dreams come true with her gorgeous die cut rainbow. It's just so perfect. And then here is the card by Audrey that inspired us to make ours today and it is so beautiful. I just love the stripes and those gorgeous clovers on there. And then here this card by Audrey as well is just beautiful and I love that she used the Happy Mother's Day sentiment from Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring. And then this card by Elena is so beautiful. Her wedding theme is just stunning and wishing you a lifetime of happily ever after is such a sweet phrase. And then this card by Leticia is just gorgeous. I love that she used the beautiful heart wreath stencil with the sentiment. Oh, I just love it so much. And we can't wait to see all of your amazing Henry's Build a Sentiment cards. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day.